People who complain about Jupyter Notebook that it is bad for data science usually complain about state in Jupyter Notebook. And this problem can be easily avoided if you restart Jupyter kernel very frequently and also make sure that you run all the cells from top to bottom. Easier to say than it is done. But there is a shortcut that you can set up as a hotkey so that within a few key combinations you can actually restart the entire notebook the kernel and run cells from top to bottom and that's what exactly this tweet from hamel is about so today i came across this tweet and i thought oh why don't we explain what the problem that it is and then how do we solve it using this shortcut so this video has got two parts the first part i'm going to explain you about what the problem is than me explaining there is a very famous person joel gruz already has explained about this problem very popular talk that in which this problem has been explained so what's the problem the problem is notebooks have tons and tons of hidden states that's easy to screw up and difficult to reason about it's, it's a very nice statement so what is he trying to say he's trying to say when you see a notebook that looks like this might look good but when you try to run it again you know you didn't get the same result so y equals equals 4 is not y equals equals 4 now it is false why because he's saying oh see the numbers it's not executed in the same order okay maybe i'm going to execute it in the same order but again y equals equals 4 is false oh looks like something was ran in the middle and then it was deleted so this is the problem that we are talking about which is the problem that is created by hidden state to quickly demonstrate the problem i've created the same code that joel gruz showed us so first we have got a function and the function takes an input and the function returns the input by simply adding two to it and then we have another variable taking the result of the function and then assigning it to it and then finally we have pairing it whether it is equal to four and then it if it is four you're going to see true and then we're going to print it so if i run it from top to bottom you can see when i run it it says true and also you can see the number so this is the problem that we are discussing about right so now the number has started from 5 to 8 so let us assume that this is the notebook that you got on your machine it's working fine but let us say just before you share the notebook you made some changes what kind of changes maybe i i, I go here add a new cell and then i say y is equal to 2 and then i run this i run this i run this now what happens is when before you share the notebook you delete this let's say you deleted this now what do you see somebody who has not seen what you have done might automatically assume that oh ideally it is supposed to show y equals equals 4 is equal to false but is that the case no that is not the case so this is usually solved by restarting the kernel okay and then running everything so you're restarting and running everything from top to bottom this is fine even now it looks fine but another problem is what so somebody instead of running this in the same order could have run it in a different order maybe you know what i started from y equals 2 okay then i ran this then i ran this and then i ran this now i'm printing this now this entire thing looks different because i've jumbled up across the orders like the order in which the jupyter notebook has to be run should be top to bottom but i've completely jumbled it and then i've ordered uh, ran it in a different order altogether. So this is the second problem that Joel Gross is highlighting. In both these cases, the hidden state where Jupyter has the hidden memory of the order has created the problem for somebody who is trying to reproduce your notebook to have the same result. And like we just discussed, the solution is restart the kernel and then go click this. So which means restart and you are going to run everything. So that's the, that's the reason. But how do we make sure that this is easier for us to do? And that's exactly this tweet is about. So this tweet from Havel actually highlights how you can go to the settings in Jupyter Lab and also edit the shortcut so that in just a single key combination, you can run this entire notebook every now and then so that you don't fall into the trap of hidden state so that your notebook is reproducible so that you know nobody is going to tell you that Jupyter notebook is bad for data science so now I'm going to just I've already taken this whatever you have got here as as a snippet here so the exact thing that you see here so we want to define a shortcut we want to define a shortcut to do what we want to define a shortcut to do notebook restart run all so we want to 
basically restart and run all that's that's what we want to do so how do we want to do it we want to set up a shortcut that says control r so control r and then r so when you say control r and then r you want to restart and run all the cells and where do you want to do it you want to do it with the body so now this is the shortcut that we want to define how are we going to do it we're going to simply go to the settings click the settings click advanced editor so you have a shortcut for that as well so i can close this i can do like this you get the same shortcut this is very similar to the existing shortcut that you would sign, see in a lot of ides like if you are on vs code you you press command comma and then you would get a keyboard shortcut but if you don't want to do that go to settings click advanced editor and then you would get this after you get advanced editor you have two options one is your system default the second one is your user preference now all you have to do is copy this entire thing and paste sorry paste it in user preference when you paste it make sure that there are no errors found for example if let's say if the json is invalid it's going to tell you that it is invalid let's say i missed a comma it's going to tell me that something is missing so make sure that you have got no errors after you have made sure that you have got no errors simply save it now after you save it now this shortcut is already enabled you don't have to restart the notebook you don't have to restart your jupyter kernel you don't have to do anything you can just simply go ahead like for example in our case let's say before i want to uh, let's say i've messed up the order um, let's say this is what i ran first this is what i ran next maybe i should start with three ran this this and then i ran this and then i ran this now before i share it with anybody or even in the middle of the code like let's say i'm going to code something new now suddenly you know like before i move on i should have this habit of okay i'm going to do control r and then r it's going to ask me oh how should i restart the kernel it's even though before it was just a click a lot of developers do not necessarily use mouse to you know just go all the way up the top like for example let's say i'm i'm somewhere in the bottom right so I, i'm somewhere here i'm somewhere here I'm somewhere here and I just go on and on. So I cannot just crawl up, always check and do this, right? So let's say now this is the point I've, I've added, added a markdown. I'm going to say, okay, this is, this is a point where I got an idea to restart the kernel. Okay. So maybe I'm, I'm at this point now, suddenly before I do the next thing, I want to say, okay, maybe I think this is a very good time for me to restart the kernel. So I'm going to do control R, R, and then I'm going to just press enter. Just in a three click, like control R, R, and then enter, I've got the notebook ran from top to bottom. So before I share it with anybody, let's say I'm going to, before I upload it on GitHub, before I upload it, share it with my uh, team members, or before even I share a screenshot of this thing. Now the key order, if you see, it's executed exactly from top to bottom, which is ideally what you're supposed to do on Jupyter Notebook, rather than, you know, jumbling um, between different cells, but still all, all is good. Well, all, all we have done is we have made sure that we have enabled a shortcut and we have executed our Jupyter Notebook from top to bottom, which means our cells are executed in order. There is no hidden state now, it's good for us to share this notebook with somebody else. So it's quite simple. All you have to do is go to settings, set settings, advanced editor, set up your shortcut. If you have not set up any other shortcut before, it will be completely empty like this. It will be completely empty like this. All you have to do is paste that shortcut that I'm going to give you as a gist, which is exactly what Hamel has already given. This is not my own idea. This is something that I copied from this tweet, but I just wanted to make it easier for anybody who is not aware of how to do this thing. Also, if you're not like, if you had not uh, heard about the state problem that people usually highlight in Jupyter Notebook, this is a wonderful talk by um, Joel Gross. You sh I, I would link this Google slide in the YouTube description. This tweet as a credit would be there in the YouTube description. Also, there'll be a gist I would link where you can copy this code and then paste it in your user preference. I think this video was helpful to you in understanding what is a state problem that people usually highlight in Jupyter Notebook and also how to overcome it by enabling a shortcut or a hotkey that can help you restart the entire kernel and run all the cells. Just one thing to note, the entire thing that I'm showing you is on Jupyter Lab. So make sure you go to your terminal, fire up the Jupyter Lab and then enable this hotkey so that you are well and good. Thank you so much for listening to me. See you in the next video. Happy coding.